and thank you for joining us for yet another program from Vienna, Austria. I'm Deborah Pirock, and today we bring you a very special guest. His name is Christian Macek. I'm saying it the, the Slavic way because I'm half Slovak, and he, his name is originally Moravian. So, Christian, Hello. it's, it's nice great to meet, to meet you. you. Nice thank you for thank joining you. me today. Um, you've been everywhere, it seems. You grew up in Iraq, Greece, Indonesia. Your father's Austrian, your mother is Flemish, you studied in Belgium, you studied in Jerusalem. Uh, my goodness, what an upbringing. Well, yes, I was very fortunate. Uh, not only um, to have been born in Germany, my father was working for a German company, and to have been grown up in all these countries, speaking them, especially also some Muslim country in a time where... And, my uh, goodness. And times were not so um, yes, troublesome, uh, I might say. And also, I, had to, uh, I was very lucky to uh, have been to German schools, but also to one American school ah. in Indonesia. Uh, two years, the international school, which was American school, and it was a very good time I had, and very good teachers, and I think they had a very good influence on my life. Yeah, well, your English is wonderful, so Thank I can't you. complain okay. about that at all. Um, you're, I, I shouldn't say a youngster, you were born in 1978, but you have three degrees. Not one, not two, but three in philosophy, religious education, and politics. That's right. Um, all of which sound well, except for the politics, which could be they sound sounds very Catholic. You studied at Heiligen Kreuz, the Holy Cross uh, Abbey, where Pope Benedict visited. Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing that's where you studied philosophy. Well, that's that's where definitely I had the best teachers, the philosophy <laughs> teachers, um, Father Dominicos, if maybe somebody knows him. And that's where also, yes, um, I became more consciously um, Catholic. Um, I really had um, in my teenage years already, but then later, um, looking for truth. That was, was, was driving me. And I was beginning uh, my studies in, in Leuven, um, in the university which had Catholic in, in its name, in Leuven. Where's in, Leuven? In Belgium. Belgium, Belgium. where my okay, mother's that's from. Right. Yes, yeah. so I went back to. Um, Belgium to my, to my, to yeah. my roots, yeah. um, but then this whole university was a pretty uh, big disappointment. Ah. Then I came to Vienna, st uh, studied um, political science mm -hmm. and also, um, yes, um, somehow I also um, began to study theology. And somehow this whole situation in Vienna, this whole ac academic climate was not really satisfying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I more or less fled to Heilingkreuz. I had Father Karl Wanner there who um, um, offered me to stay there mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. also, um, yes, um, um, think about my vocation at that time. Mm -hmm. And yes, I really had a good f formation, uh, formation, intellectual formation, and I'm doing academic work um, still today. How long did you study there? Uh, two years I was was there, and um, so most of the time I was was in Vienna. So I had also a good chance to learn all, about all the her heresies. <laughs> oh boy, lots of heresies! Yes. And um, one great opportunity I had was um, to study one year abroad in Jerusalem. Yes, that must have been wonderful. It what was, was that like? It was it was amazing. It was the best time of my year. I have to say, I also discovered that time which I uh, um, did not know that I have some uh, Jewish blood, some Jewish um, 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 ancestry, mm -hmm. and yes, it was really uh, this whole sphere there. Of course, this whole s situation is difficult after a time, but it was there where Jesus was Himself, mm -hmm. and um, I could do many pilgrim pilgrimages, pilgrimages. Um, went to all the holy places. It was always very interesting with all this. Um, this encounter with American Jews there, who were my, um, I studied at the Hebrew University, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. also studied, uh, tried to study Hebrew. Oh my <laughs> it was goodness. quite difficult. Um, but it was a really enriching time for sure. Yes. Yeah, just be, to be there in Christ's footsteps must That's have been. That's right, it's the Holy Land. After very all, powerful. I can, can recommend everyone just to go Christ didn't have an easy time either, so if, uh, he, did, yes, if he didn't, you can't expect yes, to have yes, had an easy but time. But I have to admit, um, times got um, more difficult when I came back to Austria. <laughs> I was going to say, does Austria feel tame compared to all the other places you've been? You're, you're now a teacher how many years? Um, fourth year now. You're in your fourth year, and you teach at um, a particular high school, which is new, called the St. Thomas More School, I have yes, that right? Yes, yes, yes. Tell me more about that, because you said this is very special here in well, Austria. Well, maybe I have to explain something about the Austrian school system. Um, of course, mainly um, um, young people go to state and public schools. Mm -hmm. And something special, which might be very um, um, un interesting for American audience, um, to know that there's even a religion class in public schools. 
So this was an agreement, the Concordat, which was made um, by the Austrian state with the Vatican and goes back to the 19th century. Mm -hmm. So we have another um, relationship between the state and the church. church. And yeah. certain rights are guaranteed and, and the um, church, and not only the Catholic church, but other uh, um, religious communities um, have the right to have their own religion class. So, so that would include in Catholics, school. Protestants, yes. even Muslims? Yes, yes. Um, traditionally, Austria is a Catholic um, country. 78% um, are still officially Catholic. And we have a little um, Protestant uh, minority. And by now, we even have more Muslims. Mm -hmm. So that this, actually, the school where I was, one of the schools, uh, several schools I, I was teaching, um, had a, um, a majority of, um, of Muslim oh students. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah. Yes. It must be, well, that's cha a big change in Austrian history, really. Yeah. Yes, especially Vienna. These are, um, um, yes, certain challenges we have to cope uh, with. Um, in that regard, maybe it's worth mentioning that um, there has been a, a Muslim law because um, when um, Bosnia um, became part of Austria, the emperor decided also that um, the, the Muslims um, should have certain rights. Mm -hmm. And this law has been valid now for 100 years and just recently they changed it and actually the government was trying to make certain policies with a new um, st um, law for the Muslims. Mm -hmm. And this also, the, this, this um, kind of laws were also made for the pro Protestants and, and the Jews uh, later. Mm -hmm. And so we have this to go back to the school system. Um, this How orthodox is the Catholic teaching here? We yeah, well, have that problem that's, uh, in the thank United you for States. asking. <laughs> I mean, not in public school. But um, yeah. Yes, that's that's a of course a difficulty when um, the church maybe gets tempted by power. But um, I'm my conviction is that um, this relationship is positive for the church or could be could be positive. And if you look at history of the Catholic um, Church, there has been also those two two spheres, um, mm -hmm. just like like with the body and the soul, the, mm -hmm. the two powers who um, take care of the for the well of the well-being of, of, of the people mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. the church more for the soul and. Um, the state more the, for, yeah. for yes um, should also take care of, of, of justice to put it mm -hmm, that way mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, what the church now does with all its possibilities depends on the church so how the, the religion teachers are educated that's something which has, the bishop is res responsible of okay and of course um, I must complain that many students do not know much about uh, their own religion but this is something you cannot blame anyone else, but, but um, the education of um, the, the, the um, religion teachers. Well, do you blame the religion teachers or do you also blame the parents? That's the question, because the parents are also responsible for the education of their children, are well, they not? Of course, uh, first of all. Um, um, but still, um, in, in, in this uh, frame of, a, of the school, and one class is a religion uh, um, class where they get the chance to learn about something about the faith. And so that's, it's up to the teachers what they teach and how faithful they are. Of course, they get a Missa Canonica, so they get sent by the, by the bishops ah, um, and okay. they have to um, teach um, the Catholic teaching. Mm -hmm. And this one project now here, this which you mentioned, the St. Thomas More School. Yes, yes, it's it's a private school, and there are not so many private schools, so it's a very a unique problem. Uh, not problem um, in the pro situation, which is a problem, <laughs> um, um, unique um, project um, to have a really um, Catholic education. Um, and uh, this is surprising because, uh, at least traditionally speaking, historically speaking, mm. Austria is such a Catholic country. Uh, so they never had Catholic, Catholic high schools, Catholic universities, and this type of thing. It was always uh, included in, in, in public schools. Yes, well, originally the, um, the institution which took care of the education was the church. But then through time... Um, um, the, there weren't the, enough religious... Yes, but the state more or less took over many of those for various reasons. So most stu uh, schools are now state schools, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so there are only a few um, Catholic schools left. And now we've got this very um, unique um, project, and where we have a certain uh, curriculum, a certain emphases, like um, we teach uh, virtues. That's mm -hmm. something we have, a t we have a virtue of a month, 
and we're trying to teach that to all of the students. So um, that's lovely. And we could I could really sense when you go there the, the spirit. It's it's the Holy Ghost uh, is yes, there. Yeah. It's, it's How many sure. students are? It? Now we got just two classes, twenty, but we're building up each year. Should there should, uh, should be a new class. And it's a very uh, new school it's too. A, so. Yes, it's very new. It's a high school, and we have to, I have to mention. Uh, um, a Dutchman had to come to Austria to found such a school. Oh my goodness. Yes, and also the Cardinal is very much supporting it. Cardinal Schoenberg. Schoenberg, Schoenberg yeah. yes. Here in the Archdiocese of Vienna. That's wonderful news. You mentioned earlier, right before the interview began, you, you just mentioned um, uh, religious ignorance and how a lot of young people don't know their religion. And you took over a class where you asked them what Moses gave the people. What what? How old? And they didn't know the answer. They were 17 years old. They were 17 years yes, old. Yes, it was quite embarrassing. Um, yes, and even. And they've had religion since how how young? Well, since ever they, uh, since, since school started. Since school started, yes, yes, yes. So it was a complete failure, and I, I just um, mentioned that to the cardinal. Uh -huh. He knows about the problems. Things things have to be done. Um, there are some certain changes, even at, especially at the. Um, um, Theological Faculty of Vienna, which um, there are new professors, which is getting better, but still um, we're also faced with this um, crisis of faith here. Yes, in crisis, and especially from the university, this neo Marxism is um, still around in those 70s. Um, so I'm come from a new, very new generation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I, I have a different approach. And um, I, yes, I did never really um, swallow all those ideologies. And also, maybe it's because of my parents, because they went abroad when all this, I want to say, madness broke out, out in Europe and people lost faith. My, my parents who came from very Catholic families, they went abroad, they lived in, in Brazil, and then we went also. You were so in Brazil as well? No, I was just born after they were in Brazil. Uh, <laughs> but, but you missed one country. I okay. missed one country, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, that's how I, like, I had a really conservative upbringing. Um, coming from a really Catholic uh, family, uh, with a big, strong family tradition. My, if I may mention, my grand grandfather was the one who founded the Herder bookstore here in Vienna, mm -hmm. and Herder is the publishing house which publishes the book of the popes. Yes. Marvelous. Yes. Marvelous. So, it's just a little thing. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, that's that's a fun name dro to drop there. Um, You've 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 experienced so much in your life. Do you ha do you have um, brothers and sisters as well? One brother, yes. We just got married. Ah, yes. is he younger or older? A little bit younger, yes. A little yes. bit younger. Yes. So you have a little bit of competition there, yeah. Um, you've written actually three books: two books on natural law, mm -hmm. uh, and you were also the ghost author of uh, one on the importance of family mm -hmm. for um, uh, for a politician. Um, uh, you also worked in politics before you worked in education. That's right. Tell me, I, I mean, you've done so many things. Tell me about the political side of your life. Um, I, I guess I was always political minded, so that's uh, what um, made me study political science. And I was, ever since, I, I'm used to, well, combat and opposition, mm -hmm. um, so um, I know that certain things just make sense and mm -hmm. if other people try to convince me of something else, uh, um, they would have to argue. And, uh, and You're ready for a good debate. I was always re ready for a good debate and also which maybe some, uh, something which I have to mention. Um, yes, philosophy and also this Catholic tradition is a very philosophical tradition and Catholics are very um, positive about the possibilities of reason mm -hmm. and this is also what goes along with natural law thinking. And this is something, it's, um, it's a unique Catholic but still um, common sense is something um, which everyone, every, everyone has and um, Paul says um, and the natural law is written in our heart, hearts. In our hearts, And yes. of course, revelation helps us um, to, to find the truth, to, to see reality. Um, but still, we can um, trust in our common senses and the experiences uh, we make. And this is also um, the, very much the political um, the fight we have. Um, and of course, uh, the situation is it's very bad. And um, I mentioned all this, this neo Marxism, of course, many. Uh, and don't ref uh, would call themselves neo Marxists, but still That's all those. That's what they are, though. Uh, okay. They are, in fact, of course, yes. And um, we got all these new ideologies coming up, like gender mainstreaming. So this is quite, especially in the German language, um, there is a female and the uh, and the male form. So now they want to, uh, to change it. It's 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 ah. just really it's it's ridiculous um, um, how they they want to change grammar now. 
grammar, uh, grammar uh, just to reflect political yes, correctness. Yes, because to influence the thinking of the people, to influence how they um, live, actually. In a kind of relativistic manner, so that yes. everything is equal and everybody decides what they want to believe instead, yes, of, yes. instead of what the truth is. Yes, and, and this is, of course, just to, to, to ma mention the word truth is a big scandal. And it's very right what Paul Benedict said, this dictatorship of relativism. And this is also part of my um, work to analyze where this um, came, came from. Mm -hmm. So all this uh, ideological thinking, thinkers from the past, and they, just, they didn't come up the last decades, but centuries. So there's a trace, and just to know them would be a, um, very important. But it's of course more or less uh, academic w work, but important is just to, uh, to name them and to know where they come from and to go um, beyond the hori horizon of those uh, mistakes, of uh, heresies. And this is part of my um, work also. And particularly also to, well, to go back to, to um, the real philosophy, to metaphysics, and also to go back to people like Plato who had insights uh, which are not um, still valid today. So this is a very um, um, wrong opinion to think that we're now, because we are, are under... We're new and we're modern we're, yes, and things are and different. Yes, and we had so much progress and now we're smarter. And we have to be more humble and... Um, yeah, it's a very egotistical way of thinking that, when, that now suddenly we've invented something when all of these heresies actually existed hundreds and hundreds of years ago, and the church has answers to all of them yes, already. Yes, and the important, just one of the fundamental questions is, what is man? What is the good life? And there we can still compare the, the answers. And yes, I'm, as you mentioned, I'm always open for a good argument, <laughs> but so far I only found the best ones in the Catholic Church. <laughs> Do you have a favorite philosopher? Well, Plato, I have to you mention. You like Plato I, a lot. I, Plato, I think he's, yes, fundamental and um, just, yes, this, this, this virtues, for example, or just this, the thinking of a common good thinking goes back very much from Plato. And this is also like uh, someone, like church father like uh, Thomas Aquinas, um, he also uh, picked that up. And, and this is also, the, also the, the, the doctrine of the church um, that we're very much, very much shaped by this Greek thinking and as um, Pope um, Joel. Uh, Paul said very much this was a um, this something um, work of providence that Christianity came in, um, to to the West to um, and was also shaped by this thinking. So this is very much it's shaped our whole culture, and we should be proud of that. We should be proud of it, and so many don't realize that it's actually fundamental principles of the Church that have that have really. Um, generated Western thought and Western culture and Western mm -hmm. thinking. And when you start to take away things like what Moses brought, the Ten Commandments, and certain um, basic principles are taken away, all of a sudden, um, well, it leads, it leads to a kind of madness um, or a kind of... Um, Big confusion. Confusion yes. or chaos, yes. to use another Greek word, yes. right? Yes, that's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it all, we should really, in some cases, uh, uh, be giving uh, people like Plato and uh, St. Thomas Aquinas and others a lot more credit. Um, mm. um, one, um, um, what was it, having mentioned my academic work, is Johannes Messner, who's very much in line of that. He was a priest and scholar of the University of Vienna in the, um, yes, when did he la live? In the last century. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he also had to flee to, to England, so he's also been known in Oxford. During Nazi times? Yes, yeah. yes. And well, um, the Messner Society, which I work for, um, started a beatification pr process. Right now, this whole um, file is on the desk of the cardinal, so he has to decide. But um, he knows also that Messner was also just living in the past, and also there was this is part of this um, leftist liberal ideology to break with the past. Mm -hmm. Because the, the past also is, of most cases, it's a, it's a conscious. It reminds you um, of, of how things uh, were, or at least ought to be, or could be. Mm -hmm. And what I do is this academic work, and, and particularly his na this, this um, natural law thinking. Um, his main work is called Natural Law, in English it's called so Social Ethics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he, yes, he was a really um, a brilliant thinker. And yes, stressing all those important questions which we spoke of, like you know, also human dignity, where comes the dignity from, how can we argue the, the dignity of a human person, and also something like the common good. And the, the For example, the church says you should pay people a living wage. 
you know, social ethics. A lot of people don't realize that the church has this whole teaching of social ethics yes, because yes, it's yes. not talked of yes. very much unless you, you know your faith and, and you, you work and, and educate yourself in Catholic circles. Yes, and that, um, of course, the important entity being the family, and that the family fa father should be um, able to provide for his own family. And this is the, um, the measure for uh, um, uh, an income, actually. And of course, this is all the, the, the important political questions, um, but it's, which are always a question of justice. And going back on Plato in particular, and justice is not giving everyone the same. Um, this is one of those big, big mistakes. Um, but everyone, everyone his um, share what he deserves. Uh, Which but not sharing in the communist sense of the word, where, where, uh, but sharing in the common good. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Which we all participate in, and of course with the other principles, solidarity and subsidiarity. So it's not the state which provides for everyone, but all it's a hierarchical um, order um, which we strive for as Catholics. And of course, when we speak about order, we speak about hierarchy, and, and which implies that all men are not equal. <laughs> all men are not equal, that's <laughs> yes. very much true. Yeah, and, and all women are not equal either. So. Yes, yes, uh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> what would be a, a world without? Yeah, Pope Francis has been uh, really um, stressing, um, in, uh, in, in recently here, uh, the complementary nature of man and woman, yes, yes. and uh, different Different doesn't mean not equal. It just means that that everybody has a different function to fulfill. Yes, yes. And um, unfortunately, we have this separate but not equal kind of uh, history in the United States with the, with the black and the white movements, uh, the blacks, uh, uh, slavery in our history, which is very regrettable, and so on. So when we hear different but equal, unfortunately, it has that kind of. Uh, taboo almost nature to it, but uh, different can be equal. It just is a different kind of equality. Yes. And um, does feminism, uh, is, is that kind of a dead subject in Austria or, um, I mean, for example, I know uh, abortion is legal here. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding is you have to go for counseling. Um, which uh, is very controversial in the U.S. because, for example, um, pro-abortion groups fight uh, against laws that require them, for example, to even show the mother an ultrasound image of the baby because mm. they don't want them to know it's a baby, mm. this kind of thing. Um, is, is abortion even debated much in Austria anymore? Um, not, unfortunately. It's a, it's a big taboo and there's agreement on all the journalists not to speak about it anymore. And actually the legal situation is worse than in other countries like in, in, in Germany. Really? In Germany it's, it's, um, you have to have an, um, it's a compulsory um, counseling which you have to um, undergo and that's not even the case in Austria. Um, oh, it isn't? It's not even, no. no. So oh. even the abortionist who claims to be a doctor can give a counseling. That's uh, that worse in Austria. And it's yes, a very difficult uh, situation. Yes, and then not, not even um, um, figures, public figures, um, numbers about how, how many abortions there are, so probably there are even more than in other countries. Mm -hmm. This is, of course, very much back on socialist poli um, policies. Yes. And they yes. don't want uh, to talk about it. And there are only the few um, political uh, op um, parties and op which are in opposition, unfortunately, who once in a while um, talk about it. And the socialists and the green parties, which are all very much left, are the ruling coalition here in Austria. Uh, with so. the People's Party, the Centrist Party, and they don't dare um, to speak up. And, and they're in a coalition government with the Socialist Party. And not to lose power, they do what they what they do, what they what do the to try to keep everything. Yes, yes. We just had this um, new law about uh, me medical um, ethics, and yes, it's. Uh, is it is it's a disaster? Is it? Or? Yes, it is. Now, now the lesbians are also allowed yeah. to have their own children. Oh my goodness! Yes. We'll have to play, pray for Austria. And Please do so. Pray for yes, pray yes, for the. Yes. Catholics and the pro-life And of course, here. but there's um, now a little bit, um, it's more in Germany now, but um, little Austria also picks up some debates about this whole gender mainstreaming, so what you just mentioned. And not only um, this all leads to um, women becoming more masculine, but unfortunately, which is also a tra tragedy, um, men becoming more feminine. Yes. Um, so a complete loss of, of manhood. 
Um, but there's, um, there's some, some figures, some public figures, also some Catholic, especially in, in Germany, who dare to say something. Mm -hmm. And so there starts to be a, a debate. So there's always, always hope. Oh, there's always hope. <laughs> That's a wonderful place to end. As a Christian thank you, Machek, very much. Thank thank you, you so much, much for that wonderful look into Austrian politics, Austrian, uh, well, not just Austrian, but philosophy in general. Mm -hmm and also um, just your general background as a Catholic and how you became deeper rooted in the faith. And thank you too for joining us uh, here in Vienna, Austria, uh, right next to St. Stephen's Cathedral, which you can see behind me. And please join us again soon for another program from Europe. God bless, bye-bye.